CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. It's a form of non-invasive ventilation where a positive pressure is delivered and maintained throughout the entire breathing cycle. So if you're looking for a quick overview of CPAP, keep watching because that is what this video is all about. Before we get deeper into the content, one main thing to remember about CPAP is that it can only be delivered if the patient is breathing spontaneously because it does not provide any mechanical breaths. So go ahead and engrave that into your memory right now. Never administer or recommend CPAP for a patient who is not breathing spontaneously. So moving along, in general, Non-invasive ventilation delivers an inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure, but CPAP is active when both pressures are equal. Because if you think about it, that's where CPAP gets its name, continuous positive airway pressure. Because a continuous pressure is being delivered throughout both the inspiratory and expiratory phase of breathing. The primary indication for CPAP is obstructive sleep apnea. And if you're not familiar, obstructive sleep apnea is a condition where the patient has five episodes of apnea that last at least 10 seconds each within a one hour time period while asleep. This type of sleep apnea is caused by an airflow obstruction that occurs with continuous breathing efforts by the patient. We'll talk more about sleep apnea in another video. But for now, just know that patients can wear a CPAP mask at night while asleep, and the continuous positive airway pressure that is applied helps to decrease the apnea episodes by keeping the airway open to overcome the obstruction. Now let's talk about the contraindications for CPAP, or in other words, when CPAP would not be recommended. Such cases include apnea, hypoventilation, respiratory muscle fatigue, facial burns or trauma, and claustrophobia. Switching gears just a bit, now let's talk about how CPAP is used in traditional mechanical ventilation. CPAP can be delivered as a spontaneous breathing mode in traditional mechanical ventilation and is commonly used along with pressure support when attempts are made to wean a patient from the ventilator. When the CPAP mode is in use, the patient must be monitored carefully for fatigue because they are the one that is doing all the work. Since it is a spontaneous mode, the ventilator will not deliver any breaths. It just provides a continuous pressure that helps support the patient's own breathing cycle. But the machine itself does not contribute to the minute ventilation. That is all done by the patient. So for patients who are receiving CPAP, you should monitor them for signs of fatigue, which are dyspnea, tachycardia, an increasing PaCO2 level, an increasing respiratory rate, a decreasing tidal volume or vital capacity, and a decreasing maximum inspiratory pressure. In these cases, you would most likely be able to tell that the patient is working harder than normal to breathe and you'd likely notice some usage of the accessory muscles of breathing, which of course is a sign of respiratory distress. When these signs are present, the patient should be switched from CPAP back to a conventional mode of mechanical ventilation, which we do have a full video and study guide on if you're interested. I'll drop links to those down below in the description. So there you have it. That pretty much wraps up this quick video on CPAP. If you thought it was helpful, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button if you want to support the channel. I really greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the videos that will be coming out soon. Let me know down in the comments which topics you want us to cover next. And I just want to say thank you for supporting the Respiratory Therapy Zone community and thank you for watching all the way to the end. That's it for this one. Have a blessed day, and as always, breathe easy, my friend.